Banking in North America expanded rapidly on both sides of the border as the economies of Canada and the United States grew dramatically at the start of the new century. However, a new crisis quickly emerged on the horizon. Well, if you know anything about financial history, you know about the panic of 1907, how J.P. Morgan saved the street. The panic of 1907 was in fact triggered in Wall Street. There was a dramatic drop in the stock market. It caused a dramatic squeeze on credit. Life savings were often wiped out as a result of these crises. So the classic thing where all of a sudden there's a new story where, where something's gone wrong in the financial system, everyone gets worried, everyone goes to the bank, withdraws their funds. So if there's no money in the bank, you can't loan out money to anyone else. And all of a sudden now the bank is stuck. They are in an insolvent position. The situations where you'd see the big lineups outside of banks with people trying to get their money before the bank closed down or ran out of cash. There is the famous story of J.P. Morgan saving the street to really try and prevent the wholesale collapse of the U.S. financial system. He brought all the bankers together in his mansion in New York, locked all the doors, including the washrooms, and required everybody present to commit to so much money so that the street would be saved, and it was. Rather than people thinking that was a wonderful thing, a lot of people got very upset and said, why are we reliant on one financier? This led to the creation of the Federal Reserve Bank at the time of World War I. And by that time, the notion that a central bank was something that was bad was so widespread in the United States that it took a financial crisis of 1907, which happened to the US as the biggest economy in the world, that was sort of an embarrassment. So we finally got a central bank, and here's how the Federal Reserve differs from the first and second banks. It does not compete with them. It regulates them, but it doesn't compete with them. And we had a similar problem in Canada, perhaps not as bad as in the United States. The problems were similar in that our economies at the time they were very much crop economies. And when you grow a crop, you plant the seed in the spring and you harvest it in the fall, and that's when you need the money. And there's a terrific demand for money. It really pinched where the Western farmers were concerned. Eastern farmers too, but the Western farmers. And the reason why was because it takes a lot of money and it takes a lot of transactions to get the crop to market. The crises led to a restriction of lending by banks, which would have been a disaster for Western farmers. So the Minister of Finance of the day, Mr. Fielding, modified the provisions of the reserves that the banks required and lessened them for the crop season. And that simple measure got Canada through the crisis, so we did not have the trauma that the Americans had, and perhaps because we didn't have the trauma, we didn't get around to creating a central bank until the 1930s. The crisis of 1907 was averted. War erupted seven years later in Europe. To finance the war, Canada introduced the income tax. The USA followed suit a few years later. <laughs> 